Welcome to the latest episode of Five on the Floor and the Five Reasons Sports Network. Thanks for joining us on your favorite podcast app. We're on Red Circle, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Apple Podcasts. We're also on the Five Reasons YouTube channel. You can check out all of the other content, including every every single day, Finns Nation with Lewis Song every day, Monday through Friday, if you're looking for your Dolphins content. Also, check out FiveReasonsSports.com. Spell that one out. You get the latest takeaways from Brady Hawk, the latest columns from Mateo Mayorga, and the great sponsors of the Five Reasons Sports Network, Who's our friend, Arash? You can find him at MortgageByArash.com. That's MortgageByArash.com. What will you find there? Well, if you want to close on a property quickly, and we know these days with what's going on in the real estate market and interest rates and all that, you certainly want to do that. Reach out to him at MortgageByArash.com. He offers you competitive rates, down payment options as low as 3%, fast closings, most in less than 20 days. Credit scores starting at at 620, so anything 620 or above, you're in good shape. First time home buyer programs available. Borrow assister, assistance programs available to help with down payment and closing costs. So reach out to him. It's mortgagebyrosh.com. Make sure you mention five reasons. Again, that's M O R T G A G E by A R A S H.com. And now, today's episode. Down to this gang. Yay. Uh, five on the floor. Ride for my dogs, where here's the thing, you can check the score, hustle hard, couple scars, wearing bubble frogs, just like Buck and Sam, you in trouble, y'all, kept the floor playing, got an all band, y'all seen the block, stop the one hand, and pack with trust, it's power, have the guts, we here to bring the heat, y'all can hang it up. Welcome to Five on the Floor, a daily insider show on the Miami Heat and the NBA featuring Ethan Skolnick, Greg Sylvander, and Alex Toledo, plus others from the Five Reasons Sports Network. All right, welcome back to Five on the Floor. Here's today's floor plan. We got all hands on deck because it's an all-out panic. This is like when you go on a cruise ship, one of those carnival cruise ships, and they get everybody to what do they call the muster stations, right? You got to get out to the muster station in case this thing goes overboard. You got to know where you're going to find your life raft because the whole the whole thing, the boat is sinking. It is sinking. Forget burn the boats, sinking boat because you have a 3-1 lead in the Eastern Conference Finals. That's the way it felt on Twitter today. That's the way it felt on uh, the Northeast Sports Network, otherwise known as ESPN. Uh, that's what we were hearing all day long. So I got Greg Sylvander. You can follow me at Greg Sylvander. I got Brady Hawk. You can follow him at Brady Hawk 305. I got Alex Toledo. You can follow him uh, if you're watching on YouTube somewhere in the dark. He doesn't even want to be seen. He's so, so nervous. There he is. So nervous about what's going to happen here. In the lab, scouting. Scouting. I have never seen anything like this. I just got to say, like, I, I literally, I made the mistake of turning on Get Up, which is basically one of the worst shows on television. Um, I made a mistake. I, I got up to get up this morning. I did my show starting not, starting five, okay, where I addressed some of this, decided to turn it on, and I actually heard Mike Greenberg uh, talking about how the Celtics were the better team, so they should be expected to win four straight in this series. Also saying, by the way, this is a man who's paid many millions of dollars. They laid off about 100 employees so that they could pay this man. He, came, he comes on and he says that the, Heat's, the Heat's role players would not make most rota- rotations in the league. Okay, I, I just want to, before I get to this, the ludicrousness of the day, I just want to say one thing, because this is information I haven't really shared here, but I, I put it on Twitter today and I probably put it on off the floor. At the trade deadline, okay, when the Heat were trying to unload Dwayne Dun- Dedman's dead weight contract for something, Before they just dumped it, okay, they had the option of some upgrades. We talked about Minnesota being one of those teams. There were other teams out there. You can guess who some of the players might have been. There were other teams out there who might have made a deal with Miami. Do you know who those teams wanted? They wanted Max Drews or Caleb Martin, okay? More so, by the way, than Gabe Vincent, who there was some conversation about maybe for a second-round pick. Gabe's value, I think, has gone up significantly since then, since now he's 18-5 and as a playoff starter. But it was mostly about Struess and Martin. You're telling me teams around the league were insisting upon Struess or Martin because he can't play in their rotations? Now, we've discussed the fact that players tend to not be as good when they leave Miami as they are in Miami, but that's kind of a separate conversation here. It just speaks to the ignorance of the national media, and it's set on this full-on panic today, Greg. Okay, and I, I didn't see it as much on Heat Twitter, but in NBA Twitter, it was kind of pushing towards this direction 
that somehow the Celtics are in the driver's seat because they borrowed the Red Sox slogan from 2004, don't let us win one. And so suddenly they're going to win four straight in this series when I didn't see them do anything spectacular against Miami in this last game. Can we dare say this? Because I know we've said this. We don't like when they said about teams that lose to the Heat. I kind of think the Heat beat themselves in this game. Go. Yeah. I mean, yawn, I guess, is where I'll start. I feel like it's also the order of operations, right? Because I feel like Miami's up 2-0. Let's just say Boston came in and gutted out game three, and then they, Boston was up 2-1. And then the Heat did what they did in game three and game four, and we were coming off the heels of game four. We would think about this totally differently, and the Heat would be up the same amount of games. So it's a, it's a little bit of just the recency bias game over game. I ultimately think Spolster will make the necessary adjustments. The shooters are going to show up. Somebody's going to have a big game, Jimmy. Um, and I think that they're going to close them out, Heat and five. And this is like probably just the smack in the mouth they need before they go into uh, a heightened, elevated, I guess, uh, platform, but also altitude. Uh, you know, if we're look ahead to the nuggets, which I don't want to do a ton of, they need to get smacked in the mouth. And so that's what happened in this last game. And now they need to respond. And I think they do so in game five. They had a nine point lead in the third quarter, Brady. I mean, that, they, they, were, they were not run out of the building. Um, they got really poor performances. I thought from Bam uh, compared to where he's been from Kyle, who had four turnovers, and even though his, some of his other numbers were okay, he looked out of sorts to me. And, and honestly, Jimmy had an empty 29. Like, I, mm -hmm. it, 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 it was a low-impact 29. It wasn't like, I'm taking you along for the ride with me. It was kind of like he scored because there were points to be had as the game went on, but he did not – I didn't think he – he inserted himself. And then, you know, Caleb, who I thought was the best player on the floor for either team in the first half, um, mm -hmm. had a rough third quarter. And they really didn't get anything from anybody else. So, I mean, all these guys who contributed significantly. And by the way, just a little bit of news here. They may have a bit of an issue in the next game because Gabe Vincent is questionable with an ankle injury, although I'm hearing he's likely to go. So we'll see. But Lowry was not on the injury report. Um, so that's the only other guy. We thought maybe Kyle might be in the injury report, too. Uh, but game is questionable. But I mean, I, I mean, Brady, you kind of doc. I mean, you said this today on Twitter, like that. I, I, I like to give credit to the opponent. They did certain things well. Like Tatum got off a little bit. Jalen found some more spots. Um, but I, I don't. I didn't see anything to dramatically change the tone of the series. No, I think it really was. I, I'm not saying it's the being yourselves thing, but it's as simple as your your two best players were not good enough. And you, your role player shot 25% from three. Like, you, you, that is not a recipe for success. And once the offense fell apart in that game, you saw the defense fall apart. And then you add in the fact that Boston was just – some of the shots that Miami's given up this entire series, Boston was just hitting. Like, it's just something – there's nothing you could do about a team that they've generally shot well this entire year and this playoffs. They had a really good three-point shooting game. Uh, and I, I, I just don't really have that major sense of worry just because of that factor because I even went through – all of Jimmy's possessions earlier. Just, I just wanted, I got, cause I felt like there was this idea of like, well, Boston adjusted. Now they figured out Jimmy. Well, <laughs> he's inefficient. Like, what are they going to do now? And I'm like, I looked at it. It's like every one of those shots was not like Boston doing things. Like that was Jimmy missing shots that he usually makes. Like it was a lot of one-on-one -on -one stuff that was, they, I thought they sent a lot of help down low, which is th teams have mixed that in, but it hasn't seemed to matter. Uh, as Ethan, you pointed out, like he just mi he missed certain bunnies. There was the one play where he literally missed two point blank layups in a row. I think it was the play where Max ended up getting the three out of it, where he got blocked mm -hmm. in the three. But the point was, like th that is not what you expect from Jimmy at this stage of the year. Uh, and I definitely wouldn't expect it again. And, and I'm not somebody that's gonna just. The last time Jimmy said that he was gonna go into Boston and win a game, he went into Boston and won a game. So until he <laughs> proves me otherwise, I'm not going to disagree with him. Like every time he makes a statement like that, he backs it up. So I don't know why uh, any fan that followed his words would be worried. Uh, but it really was that simple for me. It felt like it was just their team, they just weren't good enough in that game. And it was a game at midway through the fourth, and they were up six at half, with that being said. So there's just a lot of factors to that in. As, as Greg mentioned, you head back to Boston. Now Spo can make his real final adjustment that he's done in the past. He, he, same scenario they, in, the, in the Milwaukee series, by the way. 
Just because it happened in different games and their one loss doesn't change anything. They went back to Milwaukee up three to one, and Spo made some major adjustments in that game five. He went down the stretch of the game and made Bam primary. Oh, we just lost Brady there for a second. He'll be back. Uh, Wild's been a little, little shaky too. But I'm, I'm glad Brady that mentioned Spo though, Alex, because. This last game felt like a game that he left some things on the table. Uh, he he didn't. I mean, he did try the zone. They they had some success with it until Tatum came back in and busted it, right? But then beyond that, uh, there was an eighteen to zero run. He didn't call timeout until it was sixteen nothing in that run. That's not like him. Usually, he'll shut off the run pretty quickly, and he also didn't use Jimmy to start the fourth. Like that, like to me, I don't know. It didn't feel like he was conceding the game, but it also didn't feel like he was treating it like a game they had to get right. Like I, that that's how it came off to me. Yeah, I think there's something to be said about what you're saying there, specifically with um, not bringing Jimmy back in till uh, later. Especially just the timing was just off there with Tatum coming in earlier, and they they got a quick couple of buckets in between. I mean, look, I think that's fair. I think the zone was okay. I don't know how much can be put on Spo. I think, you know, what you mentioned is fair, but at the end of the day, right, I think the, the players are the ones who really messed up this game for them. And really, I think there's a case to be made that it was the anomaly game of this series, weirdly enough, because the Heat were obviously not the team who was favored by any measure, right? Uh, but after seeing the way that this series is played out yesterday felt like an anomaly. If you just compare it to the rest of the games, like I feel like, you know, they, they got 11 more threes than the heat. They made, I mean, excuse me, they made 11 more threes. Um, you know, they completely beat you at your own game with the turnovers. You know, the rebounding was even the heat. I mean, the heat actually finished with more free throw attempts this time, which has not been the case for this series. So a lot of the stuff that we've seen in this specific series has flipped on its head. Another thing, you know, that kind of contributes to that theme is the Heat shot it terribly, not only from three last night, but in the mid-range as well, which they've been consistently strong in during the season and in the playoffs. They shot it, uh, I think it was 35% in all their mid-range shots, and most of their mid-range shots are, are considered short mid-range. Um, so, yeah, that's a lot worse than what they usually shoot. Just a lot of stuff that I think they're usually better at, right? Like the, the, the threes, to a certain extent, you can't control after a certain point, like, you know, they just kind of got going and the heat, like we talked about plenty of times, they will concede a lot of threes. And I think they have more breakdowns um, yesterday than normal. Just kind of watching back that third quarter, like you mentioned, they were up nine with about nine minutes or so in the third quarter. And then it all changed from there. They went on that run. I agree. Maybe you should have called that time out earlier. We don't know if that would have changed things, but, you know, probably would have helped. I would have played Jimmy much earlier. Um, but that's just me. I think, you know, you give this team the benefit of the doubt, <clears throat> excuse me, but last night was not their night. Like Jimmy was miss missing a ton of stuff in the paint and just hit from his shot profile that he usually makes. Bam was quiet and had more turnovers and assists. And, you know, another thing that flipped on its head, just everything from that game feels like, um, you know, some of the stuff was controllable when it comes to their defensive effort and being a little bit sharper in their execution. Some of those breakdowns let the, the, the Celtics kind of get going in transition. Then the turnover started happening, and then boom, runs happen. And, you know, one bad quarter can win the whole game. You know, we're right back into quarter talk, right? The Heat beat themselves, <laughs> and that one quarter is what ruined the game. Well, it works It works, It works. works both ways. I think the Heat, there you they, go, lead yeah. by, they, they lead by one quarter in the series. Um, Greg, before we go to break here, uh, it, on the Boston side, okay, uh, what, what of what happened last night, would be most sustainable and concerning. And then you can't say nothing that there, there's gotta be is, I mean, it, did Tatum finding a little bit of a groove here. Is it? Yeah. I think right. it's that that's the number one thing because he can, you know, score in bunches to the point where he is like an avalanche himself, but also just three point shooting in general, I think is something to watch like the heat having to keep up with them. If they're shooting at that clip, that changes the dynamic of this series. But I also don't think that they can do that game over game over game. They're going to make the adjustments to get that, um, to get, you know, get them off of their, uh, sweet spots but those are the two things and like from that that i'll be watching in game five all right we're going to talk more about it and we'll project forward 
uh, here a little bit to game five and maybe some adjustments that Spolster can specifically make and maybe is a rotation adjustment in order because there really hasn't been one uh, in this series to this point. We haven't seen Highsmith. Uh, we thought we might, and this is, there were more Zeller minutes, which I didn't think were bad in the last game. But what else uh, What else can Spo do and also what lessons can be taken from the closeout? Uh, well, that wasn't a closeout situation in Boston last year, but the game six win in Boston last year to push it back to Miami. We do want to mention another new sponsor of the Five Reasons Sports Network, our guy Alan. Um, he's a South Floridian, too. He's a big Heat fan, but he also can help market your business. He's with Smarty Pants Marketing. There's a Z in there. It's smartypantsmarketing.com. Marketing sucks. Have you ever found yourself saying those exact words? Most business owners use a spaghetti on the wall approach with marketing and don't have a clear plan. You've likely tried doing the marketing yourself or outsourced it. When it doesn't work, you go back to relying on word of mouth referrals. If you want to get ROI, return on investment from your marketing, it's time to call Smarty Pants Marketing, a full service digital marketing agency that will help you scale your business by creating custom programs around your goals and maximizing your marketing spend. If you're tired of your marketing not working, wasting money, time, and energy, and want your business to advance, it's time to call Smarty Pants. You can find them uh, on social media as well, on Twitter at Smarty Pants. That's Smarty Pants, P-A-N-T-Z-M-K-T-G, for short for Smarty Pants Marketing, or on Instagram at Smarty Pants Marketing. Reach out to Alan and his team today. We're also sponsored by Prize Picks. Use the code 5, F-I-V-E. Get that initial deposit matched up to $100. I say this all the time. You got to put the money down at the beginning because that's when they're going to match it. You don't have to use it all then, but that's when they're going to match it up to $100. And there is, with prize picks, there's no rollovers. There's no silliness. I have some money from a leftover deal with a betting company, not Better Edge, which, by the way, is our legal betting sponsor, where the Heat are now eight-point underdogs uh, going into game. We're going to discuss that specifically. Uh, but I have I have some old money that I made from a long time ago. Trying to get your money out of some of those offshores is just impossible. It's got to be Bitcoin, or it's got it's just one thing or another. It's just irritating, okay? Or it's, you got it's fifty dollar fees. And all, you don't have that with Prize Picks. It's literally it, you you give them the code five F I V E. They match your deposit. There's no rollovers. There's no gimmicks. You can start playing right away. And all it is is props up or down. It's really simple. Try it today. Just wrote it the number one fastest growing sports product in the country. Use that code 5, F-I-V-E. Get that initial deposit matched up to $100. Let's start there with our friends over at Better Edge. Eight-point dogs, Brady. Eight-point dogs in Boston. They were one-and-a-half-point favorites at home, and it's like the betters after that, after basically the Heat have been cleaning Vegas's clock here um, for the, the entire postseason. And it's like, okay, we, we favored them in one game. didn't work. Eight point dogs, but I want to talk about not in the betting sense as much. Although we would love for everybody to enroll at betteredge.com and use the code 5RSN. I want to talk about it in the sense, thank you very much, Alex. I, I want to, in the sense of the Heat like this position better. Like we've talked about it, they are horrible front runners. Like they just are. Like last year's one seeds, they're not comfortable with it. They like being an eight seed. <laughs> Caleb talked to the New York series. Even when they were up 1-0 about we have to act like we're down 0-3. <laughs> Excuse me. You heard a lot of that rhetoric last night from them. It, it's who they are, right? I mean, I, I feel like the mindset will be better because people are not expecting them to win this game. It's just It seems stupid, but it's that simple. I mean, I haven't kept up with all the spreads, but it felt like every game they're favored, they end up losing. <laughs> like every other game, <laughs> they've literally not been the favorites, and they and they end up winning the two games of Boston and all that stuff. So – uh, the funny thing about the, that mindset thing and, and having that underdog mindset is I feel like that's, this team hasn't had that where uh, and, like they haven't felt like they were ever front running, even when they are front running, to your point. Like when they had the 3 lead and they're saying about the 0-3, just because and it's funny because it starts with Jimmy and it starts with him just having this comp, this unreal confidence where no matter what the scenario is, no matter w- what the position they're in, he's just acting like he's the most confident man in the world because he is, but he's also leading in that way because he knows the role players will follow him uh, and be just as confident. And it's a credit to them as well, because I feel like this role player, they have to be the most mentally stable group of role players that I've seen in a long time. Like all of them have unreal confidence. Like if you just go down the line, it, it really is wild. And I think that's a big reason of why they're performing uh, like this right now. It, it just is what it is. But uh, you mentioned before, I guess, about the adjustment kind of heading into the next game. I think the biggest thing um, would be surrounding Jimmy, because I feel like it's interesting the way 
Uh, I mentioned this the other day. The way that Jimmy has treated this playoff run has been funny because we always talk about him being the most like unselfish superstar. He doesn't in the bubble. He would they would talk to him on the sideline. I remember before like finals games, and he would say, "I just want to get my shooters going early in the game." Like everything is always pushed on to everybody else. This playoff run's been different because he's basically mm-hmm. said, "Give me the ball, get out the way," because either I'm going to score or somebody a defense is going to react to me, and I'm going to make the pass to you. So everything is going to revolve through me. That's been their new offense without Tyler. Uh, and I think the one adjustment that we could see, and it's I guess it's similar to what we saw with Milwaukee in that game five when they made Bam kind of a primary option. I think they really do need to get Bam going, and I think that's a clear thing that we need to talk about, that they need to have him as an offensive factor to open Jimmy up a little bit more in game five. But the, the thing I talked about before the series, something they went to a ton – uh, was like the Kyle Bam pick and rolls and Jimmy off ball just flipping dunker spots. Like it, it for some reason it works against this Boston team. They they found gaps against it much. They have not gone to it much in this series. And I know for a fact it's in their back pocket. Like that is something they can go to. And if they're gonna find a way that at times not to do the Jimmy Savior stuff where it's I'm gonna shoot or if not I'm gonna pass, they're not gonna stick him in the corner. They're gonna put him there. And I think it's not that that it's gonna be jimmy just getting easy layups i think that what's open that up is they're gonna be worried about jimmy off ball and all of a sudden bams look kind of look a lot easier so uh i don't expect a lot to change defensively to be honest i thought they've done some interesting stuff even in the last two games they've went to start games with bam on smart just to make him a full-on helper i think that's an interesting adjustment they've went to but i don't think there's a lot to play with defensively i think mostly it's about the offense because like i said in game four the offense dictated the defense that was the offense was the main issue uh so we'll see if they go to it and then there's also the factor if maybe that doesn't and we just lost Brady again. So we'll, we'll, we'll come back with that thought. Uh, There's also what, what? the factor that Jimmy Butler did not look disturbed nor concerned at the he end of that game as he here. smiled. Right. Brady's On back. the bench. Well, Man. that. Would we well, be concerned if Jimmy's not concerned? Okay, but the only, the, only, the only counter to that is that people will say when he said he was stupidly locked in, he had his worst playoff series ever. So sometimes <laughs> some, sometimes reading him on stuff. But I will say, Another it, anomaly. I, walk the, I walk in the locker room, and what was the song? Mama said it'll be okay. Okay, literally. You walk in, like, Jimmy's sitting there bobbing his head to it. And then he comes out to the press room, and I know you guys caught it, but I watched it afterwards where, A, he's telling the media to take away his $25,000 fine, and he's saying he's going to go drink. I'm surprised he didn't put, push Milkalov Ultra directly <laughs> up there because he would have made the $25,000 back. But he's going to go drink some beer. So you're right. He does not seem disturbed at all. Uh, but, but uh, you know, look, and, and the other thing is, you're right. He, as a player, he's been completely counter to what we've seen. He's setting a record for first quarter points in the playoffs. Okay, like, and this is a guy, like like we used to say, like, do you, he used to wait, okay, to get his everybody going. And now it's like the easiest play on prize picks is the first six minutes prop. That's I, like the first six minutes prop with Jimmy. Like if it's under six, play it, okay, because he's going to go over that. But, Alice, let me go to this because there is one concern here. Gabe Vincent is listed as questionable. And and they, and and so, I mean, is that is that a, let's say he doesn't go. What is this? I mean, you, you're going to play Kyle 35 minutes or you just, what are you going to do? You, you, you start him, don't you? I don't think this is likely, but the fact that they listed him as questionable at all, I feel like it's something we should address in case we get, you know, news right before the game. Yeah, I mean, that <coughs> would definitely not be nice for the Heat. Like, Gabe has just been such a big part of what they've done. Um, you know, I've said to Brady and others before that, I think I, I don't feel the same now, but I think Gabe, Caleb, and Kyle have all kind of taken turns being the third best player for this team. Now I kind of feel like it's more Gabe and Caleb because Kyle has only had one like great game in this series so far. Um, five but, of nineteen. Five of nineteen in his last three, Alex, with seven turnovers. Kyle. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that's there you go. Like that's that's got to change. Like if he's going to be the one that's going to get be getting those minutes for sure. There's no like question about it, obviously, since, you know, your other backcourt players are out. The other options we will be talking about if they were healthy are not there. So I think these are the type of games that, you know, Kyle are I, th- I think is built for. I think he gets motivated for stuff like this. And we've seen it before with, you know, their best players out. Kyle will step up his game. It's not quite that situation. I'm not expecting him to kind of go out there firing. But the thing with Gabe is the role he plays in that starting lineup is, he, he gets up shots as somebody um, to kind of um, show himself as a scoring threat to the defense. He's gotten going, and I just think in that role, and I don't know that Kyle can replicate that because he that's not really how he wants to play. He doesn't want to attack the drop and look for his shot first. 
before looking for the pass. And look, Gabe had some great passes yesterday, but it's kind of reverse for him. So maybe we see that Kyle Bam pick and roll. Maybe you see some lobs, things like that. And you probably will see more Kyle Lowry in the mid range. I think those turnarounds, him snaking the pick and roll, we'll, we'll see some of that. I would like to see him be more aggressive. I've said it multiple times, pulling up from three a little bit more often. I think they're going to need him to do that. I like the way that he he does try to get into the paint, though. It just doesn't always work. Like, I think what Brady was saying, that their offense was really what led to that third quarter run. It was just so bad. And the Celtics, so many of those points, watching it back, were in transition or, or semi-transition. Um, you know, guys were cross-matched. The defense wasn't set. The help wasn't really there. There were a couple of half-court breakdowns, but most of it was off just bad offense and not making enough shots. It kind of was a little bit re reminiscent of some of the regular season games that you felt they blew because not only they were, were they missing shots, but they didn't do what they were supposed to um, with their defense and forcing the other team into more turnovers than you. You know, they the Celtics completely destroyed the Heat in that battle last night. Um, so, you know, just going back to the Kyle thing, you need him to be a lot better than what he's been so far, you know, in these last few games. And I, I really do think it, it would hurt a lot if Gabe is out, like he's, he's been a big part of this. I'm going to let you close with this, Greg. And I uh, want to thank our sponsors, mortgagebyarosh.com, smartypantsmarketing.com, price fix, use the code 5, better edge, use the code 5RSN. And we'll have full coverage of all this tomorrow, pregame show as usual, an hour before the game on the YouTube channel. So make sure you subscribe so you get the notification. Turn your notifications on, everybody. Uh, make sure you do that if you're on the YouTube channel because we got a lot of subscribers. A lot of them don't have their notifications on, so they don't know when stuff is coming. Uh, play uh, Playback during the game. Um, Brady, myself, and Alex will all be on there tomorrow night and then post-game show with the four of us uh, as soon as the buzzer sounds uh, and all the rest of your coverage. But let, let's go here, okay? If they – this sounds so stupid. They're up 3-1. But, I mean, let's indulge for a second. Is this a, is this a, a little bit of must game? Because uh, because the, the way that this is being framed here is that Miami loses this game. They've lost two straight in the series. You start to doubt yourself. Then you come back for, I guess, what is perceived as a must game because you don't want to have to go up to Boston. You don't have game seven in That's your home this win. time. Game right? six is the must win. And I, I also would feel super confident in a game six. Like, come on here. They just beat them in Miami once. And I know they did it twice last time, but this is a different run, different teams. So I would feel confident heading into a game six. But the but the national narrative would be that the Celtics were taking back control of the series. So the Heat would have to fight off whatever mental hurdles come with uh, the loud version of the national media screaming that because that's what they want to happen is that right. – they want the Celtics to come back in this scenario. So they're going to will that to happen. But I, this is the type of group where I think that they know all that. They're going to go up there, handle business. I expect a huge Bam out of bio game. That's mm -hmm. where I'm go going to start. I think that they're going to let him bring up the ball a lot tomorrow. I think that's something we're going to see. And um, uh, I'm confident. One thing I cannot understand about the national media's preference for the Celtics in this series, okay, beyond the fact that Boston is not really a big market, okay, that's one of the, that's a misnomer, okay, it's, it's it's not it's not a big market, it's not Dallas, it's not Los Angeles, it's not it's not New York or anything like that. And for all the history, they don't have a championship since two thousand eight, okay. Most of the championships, as people say, is black and white television. Um, but the thing is, they're dull. Like, I, I don't understand. Like, people are complaining about the possibility of a Heat Nuggets final. And I'm like, what is more interesting, Jimmy Butler or Jason Tatum? Jason Tatum puts me to sleep. I don't, I don't, I do not understand. Look, the Celtics teams in the, in the late, you know, 2000s decade with Garnett and Rondo and Allen and Pierce, okay? I, nobody liked those guys, okay? If you're outside of Boston, maybe Ray they did. But the rest of them, they didn't. But, like, they were interesting. Like, this team is not interesting. What is interesting about this team? Tatum's son? Like, I, 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 don't, I don't get the fascination with this particular group. I mean, a Nuggets Celtics final. Cute step backs. What, what's that? Cute step backs. I guess, but, like, a, a, a Nuggets Celtics final? The league's looking to anoint the next guy. And they don't but want it to be a big man. So see, that, Tatum is the thing. They're he trying to position him. He was number one among Americans in MVP voting this year. Okay, so there is a certain positioning, and obviously with LeBron fading out, he's not that guy though. Like he he's a really really good player, but 
there's no there there. Like, he's not mussy. Like, literally, you didn't know last night if Jimmy was going to come out shirtless, if he was going to come out there at all, if what he was going to do. You had just no idea. He, he literally started his press conference with a song. Like, th- this, people want to see Jason Tatum instead of that? Or Jalen Brown? Like, Jalen's an interesting, smart guy, okay? A very principled guy. But, like, I, I don't get... I'm sorry. I don't understand. And, and the one other thing Brady mentioned that I, I did want to hit on because I missed it at the time is if you saw that video of Butler going at Struess, I don't know if everybody saw that. It was on Twitter today. You should check that out. You saw that video of Butler going at Struess. It's one of those lip reader guys, and he basically caught the entire thing. And he's tearing Max a new one, okay? On a, you're so right about that. The best thing about their role players is they can take Jimmy's bleep. Like, it's like that's the thing. And like, they'll go you, back at him. Max, is right. not, Max will do the same thing to Jimmy. Right, like they're just holding it, each it, other it, accountable. They they do well. It's another Tuesday night in Miami, right? Like that's what that's what Flo says. But it, but it is it is true. Like if you look at Max, Gabe, and Kalen, the reason that there's respect from Jimmy for those three is he can do that to them, and it doesn't affect their performance in a negative way. Um, I, you mentioned Bam. I think we're getting the Kalen Martin game tomorrow. I, I I he's in such a groove, and he is so confident about his game right now. And they don't have an answer for him. I really don't think so, Brady. If if that is the case, and I know we're looking ahead here, could he be the MVP of the series? Like, if he has another big game in him, are we sitting here having that conversation? You, you know what's funny about it? It reminds me a little bit. There have been series like this. And again, there is an award that's being given out this time for the first time, the Larry Bird Award, right? It's going to be mm-hmm. Jimmy. It's going to be Jimmy 100%. Because he's the name. But it reminds me a little bit if you go to the finals, the Golden State finals in 2015, the Iguodala one. And he won it even though LeBron averaged like 38 points a game. And that's the guy he was guarding. But it was a surprise the way that Iggy played over the course of the series offensively. So he won the award over Curry because Curry had some up and down performances in that series. Feels a little familiar to that, but it's still going to be Jimmy. It's still, it's still going to be Jimmy. Will, Jimmy's gonna, he'll hand you know, it to Jimmy, him. <laughs> no, Jim, you know what Jimmy's going to do? Without a, Jimmy's not even going to come out for the presentation. He's going to throw it on the floor. He's going to yeah, give it to right. Caleb. He'll, exactly. That's what he would do. He would give it. He would literally give it to Caleb. I don't deserve this award. And then after he says he doesn't deserve it, then he'll tell everybody he's the give best it to Chris Brickley. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> give it to Chris Brickley. Exactly. All right. Uh, or to Bernie or to somebody else in in his uh, in his crew. All right. Thanks to Greg. Thanks to Alex. Thanks to Brady. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow with full programming. SmartPantsMarketing.com. Uh, also check out MortgageByRosh.com, Prize Picks, and Better Edge. We are not panicked, ladies and gentlemen. They're winning this series. They're winning this series. I'm not going to guarantee a win in game five, but they're winning this series. And it's not going past six. Because I booked my flight to Denver. Oh, man. Thank you for listening to the Five on the Floor on the Five Regional Sports Network.